the introduction of our first keynote speaker, and then we'll get ready to move into our workshops, and uh, we're gonna have a great time. Y'all ready for a great time today? Everybody say, oh yeah. Y'all ready for a great time today? Everybody say, oh yeah. All right, we see you brother David Flair right now. So how's everybody feeling today? How y'all feeling? I'm gonna be ready for that. Okay, so first and foremost, I'm gonna read this bio of this phenomenal man. Dr. Carmen is a father, a son, brother, uncle, thinker, writer, therapist, photographer, and drummer. He is a Chicago native where his cultural and educational foundations were firmly planted by several African centered institutions and communities. He received his undergraduate degree from Hampton University and a PhD in clinical and community psychology from Georgia State University. He has worked as a therapist in a variety of settings ranging from a family center to a woman's prison. He has worked as a professor of psychology at Georgia State University, UIC, and the Carruthers Center for Inner City Study at Northeastern University. Currently, Dr. Cartman works as a restorative justice coach with help, healing, empowering, and learning professions in Chicago public schools. Dr. Cartman's new book is called Ladies Man, Conversations for Young Black Men About Relationships and Manhood. It is a critical thinking guide that addresses historical trauma, hip-hop, emotional intelligence, intimacy, communication, power, purpose, and a variety of other topics. It has been received with great critical acclaim. Cornel West, Cornel West excuse me, refers to me as one of the wise and visionary writers of his generation. This book is called Penetrating and Personal by Naeem Akbar in an instant classic by Jessica Claire Moore. Juwanza Kujufu said that he does a brilliant job of empowering black males to reach their full potential. The theme for this keynote speech is purpose. If you do not find your purpose, someone else will use you for theirs. So without further ado, can we please give a warm welcome to Dr. Obari Carpenter. So when I think about the chaos that we find ourselves in, 
and the confusion and the illusion and the manipulation. I seek order in our culture. And so that's the basis of my, of my remarks um, for, for today. And I appreciate the invitation of Bob McCarthy and the organizers of this, of this uh, gathering. I really appreciate the opportunity to speak to young men because I feel like you all are the key to us figuring out how to dig ourselves out of these graves that we're in. And so I want to talk with you for a moment, a few brief moments this morning, about the, the topic of purpose, about the topic of manhood, and the purpose of manhood. I like to think about keynote addresses. You go to the graduation speeches, you see addresses before, and, and, and sometimes they, they, they have an inspirational feel to them. I wanted to start off with something really beautiful, like my answer or something about wings or birds or a region for the stars. I wanted to say something that sounded beautiful today, but I'm not feeling that inspirational today. Not while Baltimore is on fire. I'm not feeling real, real poetic today. Not while the cop that openly fired into a crowd of unarmed black people and shot with Kia Boy in the back of the head is sitting at home free watching TV right now. I'm not feeling real hopeful today because of the things that are happening in our community. Our community is on fire. The alarm is ringing, it's blaring, it's loud, and it's telling us that we are in a state of emergency, but we continue to ignore it. It's like we woke up and the alarm is telling us you gotta get up, you gotta move, but we go back to sleep. We roll over, we turn it off, but we just ignore it. Sometimes, I used to, when I was in school, I remember being in school and a fire alarm would come or a tornado horn would, would, would sound and everybody would look around and see, did anybody else hear that? Y'all hear that alarm? But unless somebody else moves, nobody else moves. Sometimes the, the alarm can become like background noise. You don't even hear it after a while. It becomes like music to you. You become desensitized to it. You become immune to it. You don't even hear this alarm telling you that we are in a state of emergency. If you're in the classroom, you might not even leave the building until somebody comes and says, it's time to move. Well, I want to be that somebody today. I want to let us know that our house is on fire, our community is on fire, and it's time to move. For most of us, unfortunately, it will take us to have to see the actual fire with our own eyes because we know it's a serious situation. Unfortunately, for most of us, we got to feel, feel the heat on our own backs before we feel like it's serious enough to do something drastic or different. That means it might take someone in your own immediate family to get harmed, or to get shot, or to get killed before you think it's time to move. And God forbid anybody in here gets harmed. I don't want anybody in here to get harmed, but we all know it's about to happen. We all know that as the temperature continues to rise in summertime Chicago, that the body count will continue to rise. We all know that as long as we don't do anything different, young black men will continue to get locked up, young black women will continue to get harmed, harassed, abused. We need to figure out some way to let us all know that it's a state of emergency. We can't continue to just go business as usual. We can't continue to just scroll on Instagram, share funny memes, and watch TV and Netflix and Empire and listen to music. We can't just keep living our life like this is not happening. The inevitable will continue to happen. We continue to watch bodies fall in the city as long as we don't do something about it. So what I'm, I want to talk today about the purpose of manhood and how that connects to the things that are plaguing our community. Because the one thing that I can guarantee, if we don't do something different, then we will continue to see black pain and black death. And I know it sounds weird really this morning, y'all eat muffins and food, and I, I hate this, to, to come with a message that's so pessimistic. But I can't, I can't deny the fact that the reality that black people are dying in the streets. I can't just continue to pretend like that it's not something that might happen to me, that might happen to you, because I care about you and my life. Even if nobody else has to, I don't want to beg somebody to think that Black Lives Matter. I don't need to prove this to nobody else. We know that we matter. We have to act like it. And that is a part of our purpose as men. When I think about the things that, that cause death for us, sometimes it looks like a fast death. Sometimes it looks like a straight bullet catches you. Sometimes it looks like a slow death, though. But however you see it, death is going to continue to befall African people in this, in this country, in this city, in the world, unless we as men stand up and take our rightful place. 
It might be through cancer you conceived to death. It might be through stress or blood pressure or prison. But black death and black pain continues to be the, the, the news story of the world. I don't know how much it would take before we realize that there's something drastically different has to happen. I don't know how many more bodies have to fall. I don't know how many more women have to be abused before we declare a state of emergency.